ride in this video, I'm going to share with you various components that I've created to give you some stats on COVID-19 based on each country. This will update each day as long as this particular URL where I'm pulling this data from. This is a JSON, JavaScript object notation. I'm going to show you how to set it up. And this URL here will be included in my free components folder where I have all of these components stored. Now, before I dive into this tutorial, all of us are living in some really weird, unique, strange times. I've been a math instructor for nearly 15 years now, and this is the longest I have been without being in a classroom face to face with students. I am teaching from home, working online, so I am thankful that I do still have a job. Some people I'm close with, they've been laid off or they don't have a job right now. Some of you may be in the same boat. Now, in terms of COVID, I don't have any close family members or friends who have contracted the virus, but I'm sure that's not the same for a lot of us. My stepdad, he's over 80 years old, and he's told me he's never seen anything like this. Uh, he's a sports junkie. Over here in the U.S., the NCAA tournaments, March Madness, all canceled. That's unheard of. I was at the grocery store the other day, and there were more people in the grocery store wearing masks than those who were not wearing masks. Whatever situation you're in, I would encourage you to do this. If your health is good and you are stuck at home, I would encourage you to learn something new during this time. While my wife is at work, my son still goes to daycare because we're still paying for it. When I'm not teaching online classes or tutoring students, I have picked up a new hobby and that is modeling in Cinema 4D. But this is just something I found to do to keep my brain moving. Outside of walking my dog every day, a little bit of exercise, uh, when I'm in front of a computer and I'm not doing tutorials or tutoring students or teaching classes, I do find myself learning how to model. These headphones, for example, this was created in a program called Cinema 4D, and I'm learning how to create these models and to somewhat make them look realistic. And we have that little robot right there, and then I'm learning some low-poly modeling as well. But I would encourage you, if you've been thinking about learning to do something, or if there is something that you wanted to do, and if you are still able to do that, given these circumstances, I would encourage you to do that right now because I think this is going to go on for a little while. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be teaching in a classroom come fall of this year, fall 2020. But anyway, on to the tutorial. I want to talk about COVID a little bit because it's on all of our minds, I'm sure. So I have various components available in my free components folder. And this first one right here, COVID-19 by country, is this one right here. It's just a single text item, but if we head over to the globals for that component, we have that URL, the same one you see right here. And the only thing you really need to change in this component is the country. I have the US in right here, and if we scroll down to US, that's how it's labeled for the country, for the United States. So whatever country you want to get, type it in exactly like you see it for that particular country, and it'll pull those stats that you see up here. Now, even though these components are different, the codes are the exact same, just the layout is different. So I can stay right in here inside of this component and show you a little bit of the codes. Again, the URL, no different than what you see up here. The country is just a text global. You will need to manually type in that country. And then the length. I don't think I've talked about getting the length of a particular list, how many items are in a list. And all of these are gonna be the same for each country. But if I open up US, you can see there's a bunch of information here, but you see arrows here. But basically every day since, uh, I think it was somewhere back in January or February when this uh, data started getting accumulated at this URL, the very last item in this list is going to be the most current one that's available from this URL. And this was yesterday, and I have found that it will update uh, one day behind where it actually is. Today is May the 4th, where this says May the 3rd. Well, tomorrow it'll have another one up here. But you can see these numbers. It's the very last item in this list for the U.S., and those numbers match exactly what we have over here. Well, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the U.S., and I want to get the number of entries, all of these arrows that you see here. Each one of these is a different date that has confirm, deaths, and recovered. This was way back in February 24th. If I come up here to the first one in the list, the first date was January 22nd. But since I want to get the most up-to-date stats, I want to get the very last one in this list and pull that information. So if we head over to this text global for length, what that's going to do is it's going to determine the number of entries that we have inside of here, all of these various dates, 
And it turns out there's 103 of these dates with data all recorded in it. And you may say, well, this says 102. Well, notice I am subtracting one. But to go over a few things with you, we're doing a web get, the URL, that global variable, and we're gonna be dissecting a JSON, that's the dot JSON we see in the URL. And a lot of this can be found in the web get function itself. Going inside the web get, scrolling down a little bit, where is it at? There it is right there. So notice we have a URL, JSON, and this is where we actually put the code in to get that particular piece of information. So check out what I got here. I got dot, and then whatever we have for our country global, GV country. In my case, it's gonna be dot US dot length with a set of parentheses after the word length. That's very important. Now, some things to note here. I'm starting off this expression with a set of quotes. I'm putting a dot and it's gonna to go to the US or whatever global you have here. So we're using a global variable within this expression and to access that, we have to use another set of quotes. Notice that one there and there. And then right after that quote, we put a plus, we type in our global variable name and then we put another plus with that quote. So this quote you see here and here, as well as the plus you see here and here, this is how we can access that global variable within the expression or within the code of our JSON. So again, dot link, that's going to return how many of these various dates with data we have. And I want to subtract one because the very first one, guess what? It has an index of zero. So if this is zero and there's 103 of these things right now, this index right here, this very last one should be 102. So if I come into this code and I take away the minus one, notice it returns 103. There's 103 of these things, but since the first item has an index of zero, we need to back off one, so I'm gonna do minus one. Checking on that. Now using that global variable length, if we go to date, notice GV URL, JSON, GV country, and now we are gonna access that particular index. GV length, notice I'm using the quotations with the plus to access that global variable. So it's going to look at US and it's gonna look at the 102nd index. That's this one right here. And then inside of here, we're doing dot date. So we're gonna access the date. And the only thing I'm changing within all these other codes that we have is I'm gonna be doing dot date, dot confirm, dot deaths, dot recovered. Let's check on that. And just to show you that, I'm gonna come down here to my global variable recover. Just be careful when you type it in, make sure you do dot recovered inside of the code itself. But notice everything is the same now with the exception of that little piece right there. So we had to get the length, the number of entries here, so that way we can access that last entry to get the most up-to-date information from this particular URL. So let's check on that. And again, the only thing you need to change is the country but let's come on over here to this other component that I have, the COVID-19 table example. It's just a bunch of stat groups. And then if I go to this very first entry right here in this stat group, that's just the header to this table. And there's no coding here really. I'm just doing country, date, confirmed, deaths, recovered, and I'm actually applying a little bit of text styling, the bold entry. Notice we can use the bold there. If you're not familiar with that, you can mess around with these settings here. And then if we back on out to where that header is, I have a whole bunch of components that make up each row and ultimately each country with some stats. So if I scroll on down, click on this last one here, that's China. If I go into the globals for that component, only thing I'm really doing here is I'm typing in China. All this stuff here is the same. Now you will notice we do have some additional globals here. The globals within this component are actually linked back to the entire COVID-19 table example. So if I head over to the globals for the entire table, the entire component, I can adjust the spacing of the table and it's going to adjust these other components as well because I have these components linked to the entire table component that you see right here. The header size, that's gonna make the text on the header bigger. And then we have the actual text size and notice it is adjusting the text size of those individual components inside of this big component. So if you wanna go pick this up from my free components folder, you're gonna actually see three components, COVID-19 by country, that's this one up here, 
You're going to see COVID-19 table example. That's the entire table. And within that component, I actually have other components to get that table style as well. And if it just so happens that you want to load up this entire preset that I have here, that is a KOWP preset and it's called COVID-19 Various Styles. And there you have it, several different components to give you stats on COVID-19. If you enjoyed these tutorials and if you have not already, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.